Good day and welcome. You're currently looking at the 15th integral in Jim Coronius's 100 integral list. And as you might notice, it's a little more difficult than some of the previous ones. So he's definitely testing us out this time. If the x wasn't here, this structure at the bottom, the square root of some quadratic, you can see that by completing the square, we could conceivably end up with some constant minus a function of x squared and have a structure that would give us an inverse sine function. That is, that gives us the inverse sine or arc sine of x. I've got to be aware that if you're from the United States, you'll use the term arc sign. So I apologise for that. Um, this structure could well be here, but that x is a problem. So we'll tuck that one away. We might yet use it. Maybe. But for the moment, the next observation we make is that the derivative of this inside, since it's a quadratic, is linear and very similar to that. So that would suggest that we might be able to uh, develop a chain rule. So let's have a look. I would rewrite the integral this way. x plus 1 times 1 minus x minus x squared to the power negative 1 half dx. And let's inspect this. If this was the derivative of that, we would in fact have a a wonderful chain rule and be able to solve it very quickly or evaluate it quickly. But it's not exactly the derivative. Let's examine it. The derivative of this is negative 2x minus 1 or minus 2x minus 1. I would like that to be minus 2x so I'm going to force it to be that by multiplying it by, by 2 so I'm going to have 2 of them two of them and put a half out the front. So you can see half of 2x plus 2 is still x plus 1. And to make it negative, I'm going to make this negative and negative and put a negative out the front. So negative a half times negative 2x is plus x, negative a half times negative 2 is plus 1. Now let's compare. The derivative of this is negative 2x minus 1. I'm going to break this minus 2 into, or negative 2, into this. And there's my negative 2x minus 1. So I'm going to separate this and this into two separate integrals. And let's see what we get. Negative a half out the front, integral. I'm going to write this negative 2x minus 1 on 1 minus, oh actually I'll leave it written the way it is because it might just be easier to follow. Now we're going to minus, minus a half, so it's plus a half, the integral, oh sorry, not thinking. Minus a half times minus one. That's where the plus comes from. And I'm going to write this as one over the square root of one minus x minus x squared dx. That's right. The negative one times negative half is plus a half. We're in business. Just something didn't look quite right for a moment. Let's continue. This now is very, very much the sort of chain that I want. Now, I, I use two methods of integration for when I've got a function to a power, but one of the ways that a lot of my students find comfortable is this. If you're differentiating a function to a power, the derivative is this. That is, 
the derivative with respect to the power is though it's x to the n will be n x to the n minus 1 or n times a function to the n minus 1 and then we multiply by the derivative of the function inside using a chain rule. And a lot of my students like to match that pattern exactly where we have our function to a power and we have the derivative in front but they like to put the power here as well or the constant here which is one greater than the power. One greater than a half will be a half so they would like that there and they compensate by multiplying by 2 outside and that will give them negative a half times 2 is negative 1 and now this is exactly that so the integral is going to be 1 minus x minus x squared to the power a half that integral is complete so whether you like this method or whether you just write this to the power of a half over a half and deal with it I really don't mind, I thought I'd show both or at least refer to the, the second method now this second integral is a bit interesting it's pretty much what we discussed first of all that if the x wasn't here it looked like it could give us a negative sign or, or sorry an inverse sine function so let's try and put it in that form I don't have a lot of room on the board so I'm going to try and do this a little bit on the fly to get a negative x squared I'm going to have an expression like that because of this x term it's going to be a little more complicated but this will be the negative x squared so that is taken care of now to get a coefficient of 1 I'm going to need a half and for it to be the same sign as the x squared this will be a positive so let's think this out negative x squared x this is a perfect square so the middle term is going to be 2 times a half times x which is just x negative x that works and it's going to give us minus a quarter so I'm going to get my 1 here I'm going to have 5 quarters so 5 quarters minus that quarter will give us the 1 and the other two terms are taken care of so what do we have this I'm going to write as a, a radical or a third I should by the way since we've already performed an integral I should add a constant here and I'm calling it c0 because when we integrate this one it'll produce a constant which will add to that one and this is exactly the structure we need for an inverse sine function 1 over a squared minus x squared if you like so this will give us the inverse sine of the square root of this which is x plus a half over the square root of this which will be root 5 on 2 plus a constant and because I'm adding another constant I'll call this c1 just combining them this will remain unchanged plus a half and this we can tidy up a little bit by multiplying the top and bottom by 2 and we will get the inverse sine of 2x plus 1 over root 5 plus c and we really can't combine these or tidy it up too much I think that's it and that's the solution to that particular integral rather more difficult than some of the early ones I think you'll agree involved a bit of observation here and some juggling around but I think the giveaway was recognizing that the derivative of this at least looked similar to that so our first step was to develop the chain and the leftovers ultimately became an inverse sine function I hope that's been worthwhile for you and you enjoyed it if you have please click the like button and uh, leave your comment if you'd like to see more of the videos in the series then please subscribe so that you'll be informed as they appear and 
As always, I thank you very much for watching.